we're in a market that uh, still has demand that is is well off where it was pre-COVID, primarily uh, air travel, but also in places like uh, the U.S. and Europe where there are restrictions in place and people aren't moving around. So, so demand is is down, and uh, and there's plenty of supply available in the market, and so prices reflect that, and we expect prices will continue to reflect that until those two come back into better balance. And I think they will. Certainly we've seen good news on the vaccine front, and I think 2021 looks to be shaping up as a year where there will be steady progress against the pandemic, and I think it will end much better than it begins. And I think as people begin to move around, we'll see demand return, the excess supply will better match uh, up with demand, and I think at some point then we'll see prices start to reflect really what it takes to reinvest in our business to meet future demand. Talk about that reinvestment. What are the priorities there? It, time is nigh for a big company such as yourselves with the financial strength, potentially even to make the most of it, do some M&A. Do you see that in your forward thinking? Well, we've, we've, we've done one deal this year with a company mm. called Noble Energy that was a, a very strong company. And uh, together, we're, we're better than we were before. There's certainly other opportunities out there. We don't need to do uh, a deal. As you mentioned, uh, you know, we're a large company in our own right. We have plenty of things uh, that we can invest in that are within our current portfolio. So one of our criteria is anything we would do would have to make the company stronger and it would have to attract investment in what is already uh, a set of assets that we're prepared to invest in that are very good. So it would have to make us better. We're going to stay very disciplined with our capital uh, spending and uh, we'd look at a deal if it would uh, would compete within our, our portfolio. That discipline you speak of, I mean, it's just now that we see how you're responding to the slump, you're looking at your capital spending going forward. Talk to us about where you think the biggest opportunities are. Is it about the Permian Basin right now? It is about closer to home. Is it about ever getting back to a million barrels a day over there? Well, volume is not uh, our primary criteria. We're trying to create mm. value for shareholders and strong cash flows to, uh, to support our business going forward. The Permian Basin is an attractive uh, asset within our portfolio high returns, short cycle, very flexible. And so as, uh, as we look at our capital uh, priorities, it, it fits very well. But we've got good assets around the world. Uh, we're finishing off a very large project uh, in Kazakhstan over the next few years. Uh, and as that project uh, completes, we've got additional capital spending then that will move into other unconventional opportunities in Argentina, in the US, in Canada projects in the deep water Gulf of Mexico. So our portfolio is rich in, uh, in good opportunities for investment. You talk about how you see demand hopefully coming back, particularly as we all have our hopes set on a vaccine from personal reasons to business reasons. Talk to us about your idea of where oil demand goes. Are you abiding by this talk of peak oil demand? We've got BP saying it's gonna be this decade, Total saying it's gonna be by 2030. Do you abide by that sort of train of thought? Well, we think eventually uh, the world is likely to level out in terms of demand, uh, but there's seven and a half billion people on the planet today. By 2040, there will be nine billion people. Most of them don't live the way we do in, in developed economies, and their aspiration for a better quality of life, uh, for a better future for their children, uh, is a very human uh, longing, and that will drive economic development and demand for energy of all types, not just oil and gas, but other types of energy. And we see that uh, continuing to go out uh, a number of decades. Interesting. So not, not on the 2030, 2040 bandwagon, but talk to us about the evolution, therefore, of not just depending on oil, but other types of en oil and other types of energy. We've seen over in Europe a big sort of transition. This moment in low oil prices has meant a focus on, well, the low-carbon fuel types. Are you sticking with fossil fuels? How do you see your evolution at Chevron? Well, fossil fuels are at the core of our business and long have been, but we've also uh, long been involved in other things. We've had wind and solar in our business for a number of years. For most of my career, I've been involved in bringing uh, new fuels into uh, tests in markets. In California, where we operate, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in, in so I, I've put in natural gas uh, refueling stations, methanol, electric vehicle charging stations. Mm. Uh, we've been in all of these things. We're investing in uh, other technologies, other energy technologies, where we think we bring unique capabilities and skills. Uh, we've not chosen to go into things such as wind and solar, where there are strong, well-established 
uh, players today that investors can invest in and that can develop these, and we don't really have an advantage. So uh, we intend to um, undertake things where we think our unique set of technical operating uh, and financial capabilities allow us to do things that are large, complex at scale, and things that aren't necessarily um, easily done by others. And, uh, and we think that will expand over time to include new things, that, businesses that we're not in today.